Brother Mike's sermon text is Zechariah 11, verses 12 through 13. And I said unto them, If thee think good, give me my price, and, and if not, forbear. So, so they weighed for the price thirty pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter a goodly price, a goodly price that I, I was priced at of them. And I, t- and I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them into the potter in the house of the Lord. Our text today is one or another one of the more well-known passages in Zechariah's prophecy. <clears throat> now, when these were spoken, when these things happened, they didn't carry nearly as much weight as they did many years later when they were fulfilled in Jesus Christ, when Judas betrayed him. <clears throat> this text has a lot of irony in it, great irony. The irony is in the scales of men's hearts where these things are weighed, where value is placed upon things. <clears throat> On one side of the scale, there is a very great worth of a godly man. Here in this time, in this text, would be Zechariah, a holy prophet, and his ministry to the people of God. And on the other side of the scale, the people were to put a value on this man and his ministry and to pay him wages according to what they thought. Then the greater irony comes out when we find that this prophecy is actually a a prophecy of the betrayal of Jesus Christ, and we consider the worth of what he has done. What wages would men pay for that? The irony becomes even greater when we consider that the money that was weighed out for Jesus wasn't for his wages, but for his betrayal. And even more ironic is the fact that one of his closest friends was paid the money to betray him. So then there is great treachery here. How treacherous it is for men to attempt to pay a wage of money for the riches of God's mercy but it is at least double treachery when the payment is not for wages, but to betray the merciful one. Before we get into this text, we should address a matter here where uh, Matthew, in his account, quotes from this. It's found in Matthew chapter 27, and I'll just read verses 9 and 10 for now. We'll read some more in that text a little later. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value, and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. Now the difficulty you'll notice right away is that we didn't read this from Jeremiah, we read it from Zechariah. And you can look long and hard and you won't find it in Jeremiah. It's because it's not in there. It's in Zechariah. So uh, this presents some difficulty for the flesh, and as you might guess, there are many different theories as to why it is this way. Some have said that it's a scribal error, that the person who copied Matthew's text was supposed to put Zechariah, and he accidentally wrote Jeremiah. And uh, some quote from the Syriac version of the Bible, which says neither Jeremiah nor Zechariah, it just says the prophet, and some say, well, that's probably the correct one. I think actually it's backwards. The Syriac version probably couldn't find it in Jeremiah either, so they just left the name out. Probably more likely what happened there. (coughs) Others theorize that Jeremiah actually wrote the last several chapters of Zechariah. If you recall, several months ago, we, we discussed that issue also. Uh, one of the commentators had said that. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's another widely held belief. And uh, that, of course, another scribal error thing where they put some of Jeremiah's writings with Zechariah's. Yet another theory is that Zechariah wrote the words, but that he was quoting from something Jeremiah said. Therefore, Matthew gives credit to Jeremiah. However, as I said, you won't find it in Jeremiah's book. The most reasonable explanation that I've heard thus far 
with which I'm not really satisfied, it's just the most reasonable, is that uh, the way the scriptures were divided by the Jews, they have Moses and the prophets and Psalms. <clears throat> now, the, the Psalms included more books than just Psalms. There were, for example, Song of Solomon, the Proverbs, and the Ecclesiastes, I think maybe even Esther, and Ruth might have been included in that, I don't recall, and the prophets. And in the section of writings uh, that contained the prophets, Jeremiah's book is the first book. So uh, the, the theory here is that when Matthew wrote this, he just attributed it to Jeremiah, much as we would say Moses. And Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. We say Moses and the prophets. Um, again, I'm not completely satisfied with that explanation, though. But we don't need to be satisfied with any of those. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> I'm sure that in the glory we'll find out exactly what the situation is, why Matthew said Jeremiah, and we find it in Zechariah's book. It doesn't make it any less true. <clears throat> this is an extremely precise prophecy of exactly what would happen to Jesus and involving Judas. So it's the word of the Lord. That's, that's really where it came from. <clears throat> And, of course, uh, we refuse to believe any theory that attributes error to the scriptures of any kind. Because if Amen. there are any errors or scribal errors or any of these kinds of things in the scriptures, then they become unreliable. Right. God himself becomes obscure. There's no foundation for our faith, no foundation for hope. And we are destitute of many good things that the Lord has given us. The psalmist said this, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. <clears throat> now, if God would allow a scribal error in his words, not our word, men, I don't care what anyone says, men are not the stewards of the scriptures. God is. It's his holy word. And I'll tell you something. God's a good steward. Amen. He's faithful in a greater manner than we can even comprehend. God is faithful. So anyone who gives credence to scribal errors, I think they just ought to have a tattoo put across their forehead that says, unbeliever. That's really what they are. <clears throat> so let's get to the scriptures here. <clears throat> Verse 12, And I said unto them, If ye think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. Now, the one who fed the flock is the one speaking here and asking for wages. Zechariah here is going to live out in a much smaller way. He's going to live out the rejection that Jesus would experience several hundred years later. And at the same time that he's living it out, he's prophesying of Jesus' betrayal. Now, Zechariah, as we have studied, has done much to feed and encourage the people in their work of rebuilding the temple. Recall here just in this chapter, chapter 11, he fed the flock with these two staves, beauty and bands, or some versions say grace and beauty, beauty or unity, pardon me, grace and unity. He has reasoned with the people, comparing for them the way things were when they were in captivity in Babylon to the way things are now when they're being blessed of God. He reasoned with them about how God had punished them when they stopped building the temple, comparing that dismal time with the present blessings of God as they are engaged in building again. Zechariah and Haggai have both spoken with good words and comfortable words for this people from the Lord. They did not have to lie to bring good news. Zechariah told him that God was displeased with the heathen who treated them badly. He told them that their cities are going to prosper and spread out and that they would be comforted. The word of the Lord that Zechariah delivered to this people was that Jerusalem was going to be inhabited with multitudes of men and of cattle, that the Lord would be a wall of fire round about her and the glory in the midst of her. The good word was that the Lord himself would dwell there. A special word was given concerning Joshua the high priest, through Zechariah, it was revealed that Satan himself could not resist Joshua, the high priest, in this work. <clears throat> God had plucked him out of the fire and set him for a holy service. Zechariah foretold of the branch 
who would come and remove the iniquity of the land in a single day. There was also a special word concerning the other prominent leader of the time, Zerubbabel, the governor. This is the word.